Hi guys welcome back to my channel so in this video i'm gonna be showing you how i get to make this side part wig if you want to see how i go about doing it then please do want to keep on watching this video and yes subscribe also let's start so i'm gonna be using this wig cap and um of course you need your mannequin head and a closure to make the wig so i'm gonna be placing the closure on the side of the wig cap and i'll be using those pins to pin the closure down on the wig cap so that I could actually start to sew down the closure on the wig cap. If you have a T-pin, it's actually better than using the short pins. At the time I filmed this video, I didn't have a T-pin, so I used these pins. So after pinning down the closure on the side, since it's the side part I'm trying to do, I'm gonna get a needle and thread. I'm, I like to use the curve needles, they are more comfortable to use. I use the curve needles and I thread them and then I start to sew down the closure. So I, I like to start from one side and after sewing from one end down to the other end, I go back and sew the, the, like the middle part of the closure, sew the middle part and extend it down to the other side. So I sew, I make sure I knot it really well just to ensure that the hair is well sewed and I, I try to sew very very close, like I sew it um, closely, I don't need um, loose spaces just so that the closure actually lays flat on the wig. So we go, 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 we go. So I'm done sewing this end. I'm just gonna quickly knot that piece. I'm going to really you have to ensure you knot it very well down so that you don't have your closure losing off from your wig, the wig head. So I'm just gonna go back quickly and start to sew the other ends of the closure. And you can see when I loop the needle through, I pass the needle around like two times or three times and then I pull the thread just to ensure that it's really tight and secure. So I'm going to keep on doing that until I get to the other end of the closure. And you have to always ensure that um, the, um, the T-pin that you use in holding the closure is actually like well placed just so that you get a really like flat sew in like it's really well layered and all of that i have filmed this video like um, um was it uh, last year or so but i never had time to upload the video like the way in which i make my closures now has changed so much but i just felt like i should just like you know edit this video and put it out there for anyone that could actually like benefit from it so i'm just going to keep on sewing down the closure until i get to the ends and when I get to the end, when you get to the end of sewing your closure, you have to ensure that, that at that ending point, you really knot it down securely, just so that you don't start, it doesn't start losing. So I'm done sewing, I'm done sewing the closure. I'm just going to quickly wrap, pack the hair, and then I'll start to add the hair extensions. So I like to start from the ends, like the you know where the um, your nape of one's neck is. I like to start from that end down on the wig cap, and I start to sew on the wig cap, I just extend it just like to the length of one's neck. I sew like to the length of one's neck and then I kind of raise it higher just so that I can actually like um, turn it around so that it lays flat when I flip the um, extension to sew it to extend it over to the other side. I don't know if you get what I mean but you would see what I'm trying to say. So as I get to that end now, I'm just going to try, you know, you see how I raise the, the, the extension higher? Then I'm going to turn it around now and sew it over to the other side. The, the way I actually make my wig now has changed. I'm going to have to do an updated wig tutorial on how I actually like make my wig so that, so that the wig cap doesn't lose its stretch and all of that. So I'm going to keep on doing this until I get to the upper part of the wig. I'll just keep on sewing it and then I tie I, I'll extend it just so that um, the, um, the sewing goes around. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. <laughs> I'm really not great at doing voiceovers, but let's just make do with this for this video. Subsequently, I'll try to like you know talk in my videos so I don't have to like voice over them. So you can see how I sewed down to that end and then I extended it over to the other side because of course it's a side part wig. So this side here it's lower and then I try to extend it higher on the other side because of course the side part is the side part to the, to the right. So I extend, I'm extending it higher on the right side. 
so I'm just gonna keep on sewing until I get to the up parts of the wig. You can see that I'm already at the up parts, and once I get here, I try to sew very, very closely just so that um, you don't see like any demarcation or there are no empty spaces at that up part. It's the up part of your wig that you need to be really like you know full and all of that. So I like to sew really closely, and when it gets to like the part of the closure where the closure is, I like to join the um, ex extension. I also hold the wig cap and the base of the closure, and I actually like you know, sew the three of them together, and I make it very tight so that the finish is actually like very very flat. Because it's a side part wig, it's not usually like balanced, so I have to go back and put in tracks in the middle part. As now that center piece, where you see like the sparse piece right there. So I just keep on sewing and extending the tracks over to that side. And I always try to ensure that when I'm sewing, I sew very closely together. Just so that later you don't have the extensions, like you know, the hair extension pulling off of the wig cap. Or probably when you run your hands, like your, your hands behind, you start to feel like the bumpiness. So I try to sew very, very closely. And I try to make my sewing really, really tight, just so that the hair extension doesn't start to lose later on. So we keep on sewing, 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 sewing until we get to the other end. Yeah. So as we get to this point here, I can't actually do the um, bend over method because the fold over method rather because it might feel bumpy. So I just have to cut it just so that we have a smooth finish. Like I am very very particular about how the wig feels when you touch it. So I actually have to just cut that well with today and then also secure that part where I cut I cut it very very well. And then I'm going to start to layer the remaining um, try to um, cover up the remaining parts that I haven't um, put the hair extension on. So I'm gonna be sewing very closely just so that there's no there's no like empty spaces and all of that so the back looks full and you know well covered. So keep on sewing from one end to the other end. And when I get to the other end, I'll have to um, uh, cut off the um, leftover extension and also place it on the part where I haven't fixed any extension on. I would have liked to do the fold over method, but it was the wig wasn't gonna lay flat, so I have to cut it out and um, ensure I tack that part where I cut really, really well, so that it doesn't lose and also the hair doesn't shed. So I'll just place that remaining hair on the that part there and keep on sewing. Yeah, and I must tell you, like, actually making a wig, it takes a lot of time, especially when you're actually, like, hand sewing the wig. But I've actually found that handmade, handmade wigs are actually, like, the best, because when it's well sewn, or, like, when it's machine sewn, it might not really layer well when it's a machine sewn wig, and it might start to feel the bones, except the extension which is being used is, like, the, um, the weft is really, really thin. That's when a machine sewn wig could actually, like, fly. Like the ones which are like you know factory made and all of that. So we keep on sewing, sewing, sewing until we get to the very top. That's where the closure meets uh, at the very top where the closure would actually like meet the hair extension. That's the top there. We're already at the top, so I'm just doing like the finishing part of the sewing of this week. Yes, we made it, we made it. So we keep on sewing, 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 sewing. I, can, I, can, um, I think if you want to make a wig, it actually takes a minimum of at least two hours. That is, we are really, really fast. Because if you actually do, if you actually want to do a neat job, it takes time. Sometimes it takes me like three hours, four hours actually to like, make a wig. So it's not making, and making wigs is actually not going to be things happy. But it's something I really enjoy doing. That's why I actually earn a living from making wigs. And um, the hair extension which I'm also using to make this week is actually from my hair line and uh, my page on Instagram is at ENL Beauty. I'm going to tag um, my page on the, in the, in the description box also. I'll also put my WhatsApp number so just in case you actually want to purchase hair extensions from me or get your wigs made by me, you can holler at me. So after I'm done sewing um, the whole of the week, I'm going to cut out that part of the, um, the wig cap where the closure is just so that 
the wig looks natural like you wouldn't want to have a black one is covering the covering that part and that part where the closure is it's i would always like to use the foundation like the color of the in, in the client's skin like if the client is that complexion i'll use a dark foundation and just apply it there just so that when she wears it it blends in with her skin and it looks like it is sewing and not like a wig so after i'm done cutting that i'm gonna move over to actually styling the wig so i'm just trying to create the part the closure which i use is actually a free part so i'm trying to create the part on the closure so watch how i do it i'm going to be using this um, um tooth comb i don't even know whether they call it the long tooth comb or something i've forgotten the name of the comb but you see that hair where i am holding there i'm going to pull it out um, that's for the purpose of actually like creating a part but i have to be careful so you don't actually tear the lace closure in the process so i just pull out the hair that's actually like creates a part of the closure so i'll keep on doing that until i get to like the um, upper part that's like the end of the closure actually creates a very good part so guys please if you are still yet to subscribe to my channel please do want to subscribe to my channel i'm bringing you good content here content like that actually like learn and actually like you know make money off of so please do all subscribe to my channel and um, share this video with your friends i would actually like love to learn how to make a wig and um i would really appreciate that and um, so let's just keep on going. So after I'm done creating the part, I'm, going to, I'm just going to quickly reach over for um, uh, the styling mousse. And I'm going to be using the mousse just to, um, you know, lay all the short hairs that might still be on the wigs, on the, on the wig down. So guys thank you so much for watching this video if you enjoyed watching this video please do not forget to give it a huge thumbs up and if you are here to subscribe to my channel darling please do want to subscribe to my channel like like this video and share it with your friends thank you so much for supporting this channel and um, if you like to see more big tutorials let me know in the comment section and um, always remember to be bold and have courage i love you with a beautiful life bye